Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the seventh video in the STM32 Touch GFX series, and today we will see how to add a keyboard to our application. Keyboard is not provided by the Touch GFX directly, but they have provided an example of using it. I extracted the necessary files from that example, modified them a little, and prepared a tutorial about how to add the keyboard to our UI. The links to all the files is in the description of this video. Let's start the Touch GFX, and create a new project. I am using the same STM32 F750 discovery board. Give some name to the project, and click finish. First of all I am adding the background image to the project. Now I am adding two boxes with borders, one for the name, and another one for the age. On top of these boxes, I am adding the text area to display the text of course. Let's rename this as the text area name. Here we will use the wildcard, and I am setting the wildcard buffer to 20 bytes. We will add another text area, and do the same configuration. Let's add more text areas to indicate the fields. Now we will add the flex buttons to these boxes. These buttons will be used to pull out the keyboard. We will reduce the alpha to zero, so that the buttons are not visible at all. When the keyboard shows up, there will be two more buttons. Here I am adding an OK button. This button will read the keyboard data, and display it on the text area field, and then close the keyboard. Then there is the exit button, which will be used, to simply close the keyboard. We will set both the buttons invisible now, and they will show up only when the keyboard shows up. Now let's add the interactions. First when the name button is clicked, we will call a virtual function, name clicked. Similarly when the age button is clicked, another virtual function, age clicked, will be called. We will call the similar virtual functions for the exit button, and the OK button. That's all for the designing part, let's move to the texts section now. All the text areas in my design are using the default typography, so here I am changing the fonts to bold. Also set the wildcard range for these text areas. You can see all the fonts have been changed to bold now. Let's generate the project once. Here I have the folder called Keyboard Things, and it contains everything we need to add the keyboard to our project. First go to Images, and copy all these images to our Assets folder. Now copy all the header files into GUI, include, GUI, common. Copy the source file into GUI, source, GUI, common. I extracted these files from the Touch GFX keyboard example, and as I mentioned earlier, I modified them a little. Like I added a function to get the keyboard buffer, and another function to clear the buffer. In the Touch GFX project, you can see the images we copied in the Assets folder. Now open the Excel file present in the folder. Here we have to create these three typographies. So create the first typography, 
and name it display. These are the wildcard characters for this typography. And this is the wildcard range. Similarly create another typography, and name it mode. It doesn't have any wildcard characters, so leave them empty. Then the third one is named as keyboard, and copy the characters and range to it. Now open this image from the folder. We have to create a text group and add texts according to this picture. Make sure you keep the same ID, the typography, the alignment etc. So create everything as per the picture. That is all the setup we need to do, click here to generate the project again. Let's open the project in Cube IDE. Here you should be able to see the custom keyboard source file. If not, then regenerate the project and refresh it in Cube IDE. Our entire working will be in the view source file, so let's open it. Open the view header file, and define a new custom keyboard. I am naming it keyboard. Now in the source file, inside the screen view function, we will set the position of the keyboard. I already have the coordinates for the best fit of the keyboard. We have the X position, the Y position, the width, and the height. After setting the position, call the add function to add the keyboard. Let's build the code, and run the simulator to see if the keyboard is showing up or not. We also need to include the custom keyboard header file, which is in the GUI, common folder. We are going to run the simulator after every change we make, so to confirm things are working fine. So the keyboard is showing up on the screen, and the keys are working fine. Also note that the default buffer size is set to 18, this is basically the number of characters the keyboard can store at a time. Now we will first define the interaction functions we created during the GUI design. Go to screen one view base header file, and copy all these functions. Since we are working in the view file, we need to paste them in the view header file. The keyboard should not show up on its own, so after adding the keyboard, we will set its visibility to false. And invalidate it after making changes. Now let's write the name clicked function first. When the name button is clicked, we want the keyboard to show up, so set the keyboard visibility to true. Along with the keyboard, we also want the exit button, and the OK button to show up. Alright the code builds fine now, so let's see the simulator. Here you see the keyboard is hidden, and when I click on the name box, the keyboard and the button shows up. Just like the name clicked function, the age clicked function will also have the same behavior. There will be a little difference between them, but we will add it later. Now when the exit button is clicked, we will hide the keyboard along with the two buttons. And a similar behavior for the OK button.
Let's see this much part in the simulator. So everything is working as per the expectations so far. Now we also need to retrieve the keyboard data, and display it on the name and age field. Let's create two variables first, the name mod, and the age mod. Now when the name box is clicked, the name mod variable will set to 1, and when the age box is clicked, the age mod variable will set to 1. This will basically help us to identify the source of the keyboard buffer, whether the buffer contains the name data, or the age data. When the exit button is clicked, both the variables will reset to zero. Now when the OK button is clicked, we will check which variable is set to 1. If the name mod is set to 1, that means the buffer holds the name data, and hence we will update the name text field with the buffer data. The buffer contains the ASCII characters, so simply the string copy function will work. I have defined the function get buffer in the custom keyboard source file, and it is used to retrieve the buffer. Similarly if the age box was clicked, we will update the age text field. After updating the text fields, we will clear the keyboard buffer using the function, clear buffer. The B in buffer is uppercase. Alright the code builds fine, so let's test the simulator. As you can see the keyboard is working as expected, and the data is being displayed on the text fields. Everything is fine, so let's flash the code to the board. So I hope you understood how to add the keyboard to the application. In the next video, we will retrieve this keyboard data, and send it using the UART. That will basically be the sending data from UI to the MCU. The link to download the files is in the description below. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.